Hey you guys, today I'll be putting in my very first hinge, or at least I will try to. Here is the box that I want to put a hinge on. I marked it blue tape, the side that I want the hinges to be on. It's a very simple box. Um, I didn't even finish, I didn't send out the glue squeeze out or anything. I want to put splines, I want to do something cool on the top. But I don't want to go to all that work if the hinges are not successful, so I figure I'll, st I'll start with the hinges. Now for the hinges, I picked up this Brusso JB102. This was recommended to me being very good quality. And I've been staring at them all morning, trying to figure out how they get installed. And I just cannot figure it out because the barrel of these hinges, they are square, they are not round. So that makes it a little bit difficult because it seems like it wants to be flush with the back. But then when you open them, those square, they hit your wood. So I think you have to mortise a leaf or a, a mortise for the leaf of the um, hinge. But then also you need to mortise three other tiny mortises for these squares. So they don't hit it when it opens and closes. Anyhow, I have to do some research on this. If you've used this type of hinges, please let me know what the trick is, how I should install them. But because this box is not that good of a box, it's just a simple box. I figured it's not worth to put the $50 hinges from Brusso. So I picked up these ones from Amazon. These are just $8. Just your typical tiny hinge with a round barrel. And these ones, they seem fairly okay quality. They're not flimsy like other ones I bought. But these ones should work. So I'm going to go with these ones because it's my very first hinge and I don't want to go with those super complicated square ones. Someone once told me the most dangerous tool in the shop is an unsharpened tool. And because when you do hinges, you have to use chisels. First thing I have to do is sharpen my chisels. Now, I've used chisels in my shop, but never for wood. The only thing I've ever used them is to clean up the squeeze out glue from inside the boxes. And I have this uh, good Stanley chisels. I have a set of them. And this is what I've been using to clean up the glue inside of the boxes. And then I kind of felt bad that I was using these good chisels for glue. So I bought myself a set of these cheap ones on Amazon to use for glue squeeze out. So now I'm going to keep the Stanley ones for wood, but I don't know how to use them. So this is going to be interesting. I do know I have to sharpen them though. So I do have some uh, diamond... Um, sharpening stones, I have some wet stones, and I have tried them before and successfully sharpened some of my plain blades and stuff. But for my chisels, I'm going to cheat and I'm going to use a grinder. I'm going to show you the grinder I use. It's very cheap from Amazon, but it works really well. So that's what I'm going to use to sharpen my chisels. Let's get right into it. Now, this is my tiny grinder. And as you can see, it's a tiny little thing as you know, as big as this box. Let's see. I have a tape measure. So it's only about 10, 10 inches long and maybe like seven inches wide. So very, very small footprint. And it has this uh, glass wheel that has sandpaper on both sides. One is coarser, one is finer. And what I like about it, why I bought it, is because on the side here, it has this guy that you can just Put your chisel um, like this inside against this fence and then you'll get perfectly uh, ground uh, chisel head, hopefully the blade. So that's what I'm going to do right now. It's with the uh, fine down. I'm going to put it with the coarse sandpaper down. And you see this is where the chisels sit in at the angle. And you can determine the angle. You can change it to whatever angle you need. Here is where it shows you what angle I am. I'm at 30 degrees right now. And you can change the angle by squeezing this together and then this will move up and down to change the angle. So, uh, coarse sandpaper down. I'm gonna screw this in. And let's sharpen this chisel. This chisel, it is not sharp at all. I don't know if you can tell. So let's see what this little machine can do. I'll put my glasses on. I am going to, since this is not bolted to my bench, I'm just going to clamp it. That's so small. One clamp will do. There you go. This is not going anywhere. I'm going to plug it in. There we go. 
So we are at 30 degrees. I'm gonna sharpen these three chisels because I don't know which size I need, but I'll start with the larger one. We're gonna turn this on. There we go. Let's not make too much noise. You can tell it went all across. You can see the marks. I'm going to stop it. Now I'm going to flip this glass wheels. It comes with two glass wheels and all kinds of sandpapers and some other accessories that I don't know what they do. So this is all I've been using so far. I just wanted something really fast and easy. There you go. I don't know if you can tell, but I think it's much sharper now. It feels sharp. So that's all I'm gonna do. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with this other two, size, uh, two sizes and then we'll meet back and we'll start marking for the hinges. All right, our chisels are sharpened. So now it's time to mark the lid. Uh, what I will do, let me point you down. I have black on my fingers from sharpening stuff. All right, I hope you can see all right. And here's what I'm thinking. So the blue tape shows where the hinges are going to be. I'm going to start with the box. And I will be using, let's see, a chisel. Maybe a small, medium-sized one. Where's my medium-sized one? There it is. So I want to start a hinge one inch from the edge. So I have a... Uh, square so I'll put this against here and just make a mark so that's where my hinge will start there you go then I'll do the same thing over here and I guess I should have made it towards the outside not towards the inside because that's where the hinge is going to be so let's let's try that again One mark, two marks, there you go, that's my two marks. Then for uh, the lid, same thing, one inch from the edge, mark it, one inch for the edge, mark it. Okay, so we know that's where the hinge starts. Now where the hinge ends, I'm gonna use the same square, hold it in here, put my hinge butt next to it. I need like six cents for this. Let's see, and then mark it. Okay, that's not really square, let's make sure we make a square line and then on this side there you go why can't I make a square line there you go so stop at start and stop goes right there then I have a marking wheel and I set this marking wheel to from the top, from the edge of the hinge to the half point of the barrel. So you, I don't know if you can see, that's kind of where it's going. It's a little bit less than half. I don't know if you can see or not. But anyway, I will mark this, connect those two lines.
Okay, that is one. Do this one as well. There's all marks. I don't know if you can tell. That's all our hand go. And what I will do now is I will route with the 1 8 inch spiral route a bit. I will just go and get as close to, as I can to the lines but not go over it. So in order for my router to have something to support on, I need a scrap piece of wood. Maybe this piece of cherry. And if I clamp these two guys together like this, let's see. Okay, flip it over. Now it's gonna give me more surface for my router to be, you know, having something to ride on. Let me move you out of the way because I need to get to the edge of the table so I can clamp my box to the table. And now I will take my router and I will route out this notch. Put my safety glasses on. Let's do it. And that's what we got so far. This board also helps prevent the tear out when we get to the edge. And now I will do this one over here. And now it's time to use the chisel and clean up those mortises. I'm sure here was is where the trouble will begin. So I think I'm gonna start with the edges, very small bites. Much better. All right, I think I better leave it there until I make a bigger, bigger mistake. all right this is the moment of truth are we gonna be able to close the box so the sides are pretty flush it's like 
the tiniest, tiniest little bit. I can barely feel it with my finger. That I can easily sand it down. Um, here it looks like my mortise was a little bit too wide and then this one is too wide. Now will it close? And well, it's not bad. It closes, it's a little bit off. Definitely not right. Just a little bit off. You see that? And I think this is the back. And I think the what made it off is because here I have a little gap and then here I have a little gap. So I think it just twisted. Well, I know it's twisted. So it was not straight when I put it on. What to do, what to do. I feel like the only thing to do is pull out the screws, fill in those holes. Not this ones, not this ones, this and this. Fill them in with a toothpick, with super glue, drill them again, and then reattach them. So I'm gonna off camera do this, and then I'll see you again after. All right, you guys, I'm not gonna lie to you. This was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Anyhow, this is what the hinges are looking like right now. There's a tiny little gap in the bottom and I don't know if that's normal or if not. The hinges, the barrels are sticking out halfway outside. And then the sides, the front, um, they are flush, so they're closing. The box is square. You see before it was kind of hanging a little bit on one side and because I screwed in the hinges all lopsided. But you can see now the box closes. That's the side. I don't know if that's normal to have that little bit of gap. Maybe my hinges needed to be a little bit deeper. I'm not sure which one it is, but that's what we have in the back. That's the side. And then, like I said, the I didn't clean the glue squeeze out. This is a box in progress. I just wanted to practice my hinges. The front is flush. And then this is what it looks like on the inside. Not the prettiest chisel work and router work there. But it worked out. There's the wax I put in there so I don't strip the screws because I will have to take them out so I can finish the box. But that's the inside. And the lid stays up like this. Also, it opens all the way like that. And then you can close it. So a little bit of, doesn't want to completely close. There you go. Now it's closed. Oh, I wish I could say, I hope this was helpful and you learned something new, but um, there was not really much to learn here. Just mostly watch me experiment and learn how to put the hinge. Now, thank you so much for spending time with me tonight and I will see you next time.